Hi there, and welcome back to Artisan Upholstery Studio. It's me, Amy, and today I'm going to show you a project so easy, you'll be able to do it with a handheld stapler and a milk jug cap. What? I'm talking, of course, about this gorgeous velvet footstool, and I'm going to show you all the materials that you're gonna need right now. You're going to need a 16 inch diameter piece of plywood. This one is three quarters of an inch thick. Now I found these 10 inch tapered legs at a thrift store, but I'm going to link in the description to 10 inch tapered legs on Amazon because you might not be able to find legs with these brackets. And if you happen to have legs but no brackets, these are T-nuts that you can find at any hardware store. You will also need three inch soft foam and some tissue welting for the piping. A milk cap or any button that you might want to use. A stapler. And some fabric. You need half a yard, which is 18 inches, and you need it to be 54 inches wide. So this is how we get a 16 inch round piece of plywood because we want it to be a perfect circle and I want it to be perfectly 16 inches in diameter. I'm going to cut this piece of string eight inches long in the loop. So that's eight inches to that knot. I got this knife at a hardware store. It's for cutting um, insulation, but you can use any kind of bread knife. Works just as well. Drill a hole into that center where you put your nail, because that is where the button is going to come through. So you're cutting your fabric pieces. Uh, the first piece that you're gonna cut is three inches wide, but you're gonna cut that in half to make two pieces of piping that are each one and a half inches wide. Next, you're gonna cut your border, which is going to be four and a half inches wide. And finally, this is the top piece and it's going to be cut 10 inches wide. So you have four pieces and one of those pieces of piping is gonna be sewn to the top of the border like this.
we're going to put this around the foam here like a little belt and we want this to overlap an inch. You want it to be very snug. Make sure that it fits nicely. And this is going to overlap by one inch right here. Boom. So we're going to sew these pieces together and uh, that should be a perfect fit around that foam. So the reason that we took an inch as our guide is because when we sew that together at a half inch seam allowance, that takes an inch off the total amount of fabric that was there. Now I want that fabric on the border to overlap. I'm not gonna sew it, I'm gonna overlap it because that will make it easier to tighten it up at the bottom. And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about when we get to that point. So we're going to sew the border onto that top panel. Here at the end, I'm going to overlap it again. It doesn't have to be stitched shut. It just needs to overlap so that there are no raw edges showing. And then you can trim off this portion here that's a little bit extra, and you can use that for the button. Let's sew up the last bit of piping, which is gonna go along the bottom. You don't have to do this at our door if you don't want to. But I find that it gives it a little bit more of a finished look. So we're going to fit it on like a sock. And make sure that once it's on, that the, um, the seam allowance, the salvage there, goes down. So we're going to make the border three inches. And this is where you will find if a hand stapler is good enough for you or not.
darn, I ran out of staples in that hand stapler. Gotta move on to the pneumatic stapler. And remember that you can link to all my tools in the description of this video. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget it costs you nothing to give me a thumbs up, to give me a comment, or to subscribe to my channel. Your support is the reason I keep making more videos. So the reason that I use a milk jug cap is because it's got that uh, cavity in it that holds all of the extra fabric that's gathered there. So you need to drill two holes in it. And that's going to be to feed that string through. So I've put some hot glue in there just to reinforce the plastic because the plastic's pretty thin. And here I'm just going to add just the teeniest bit of cotton to the top so that you can't feel that, um, that button twine on the top. So there are some gathers around the edges, but that doesn't really matter. You just want to add enough hot glue to hold it all down.
Now, when you're cutting the extra fabric out, you wanna make sure not to cut that string. We are gonna need it. So this is a button needle. It's got a pointed tip. Now you won't need a button needle. You can use any kind of um, wire to go through there. As long as you can loop that string through it and pull it through that hole, which is fairly big, you won't need a, a button needle like this. So you want to push all that extra fabric up into that cavity of the button. And this is the hard part. If you have an extra person laying around, get them to push on that button so that you can secure it on the other side because it's a little bit of an effort otherwise. Because you really want that button pushed as hard as you can because that is what creates the tension on the top and gives it that nice tight look. Now, like I said, you can add this or you can skip this step depending on how tired you are at this point. I hope you have a fabulous place to put your feet up tonight. Thanks for watching.